appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 58. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, everybody, this is Riri or Ree from the New Normal Podcast 2. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on all the streaming platforms, and I'm happy to be here. That's it. <laughs> all right, let's hit the rundown now. All custom right. Hustle, Custom Hustle is my clothing line. We do custom baseball jerseys, custom jackets, we got the t shirts and the sweatsuits, also. Uh, H2H Clean, ah, oh, wait. Custom Hustle World is the Instagram page for that. Custom Hustle Co. is the Twitter page for that. All right, H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company that is a tri-state area situation. But if you make it worth my while, we can slide. <laughs> That's at H2H Cleaning only on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Now, E-Block Radio Network every Monday at 2 p.m. on the E-Block Radio Network. Tuesday, every Tuesday on the GFT Radio Network at 2 p.m. Thursday, WTNUPhilly.com, 1230 Friday, the I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m., and the THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. All right, episode 58. Are you ready for this one? Absolutely. Who's Absolutely. more likely to double back, the man or the woman? In my honest opinion, I feel like the man. Oh. Yeah, I feel like the man is double backs. Can I tell you why? Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> A lot of yours. Okay, so a lot of times to me in my experiences, because it's nothing but men around me, like my brothers, my cousins, my best friend, everybody is male. And they like history. They like to feel comfortable. They like to know what they're getting into. They really don't like new situations. Everybody I know that they've dealt with, and if it didn't work out, they always go back to their ex. They always go back because they know that situation. They don't want to keep meeting people and doing all that all over again and stuff. So they usually go back to me because they don't want to have all that drama and hustle. It got to take something really, 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 really serious for them not to mess with it anymore. But a lot of times they always, to me, they love, men love hard for real. When they're really in love, they love for real. You know what I mean? And they will go back. Uh, me, a man my loves, to me, if a man loves, he definitely loves hard because it takes so much for him to love. It exactly. takes so much for you to open up that uh, open up that part of yourself mm-hmm. that like if this shit goes left it's going bad and left <laughs> like, oh, yeah absolutely um, and just, just seeing things okay I have two brothers I have one brother he's two years younger than me I have another brother he's one year younger than me and they've been with their spouses they're both married for over 10 years but they've been knowing them forever like my, bro- my brother that's two years younger than me his name is Tino he's known his wife since he was in middle school However, they didn't date me. They were just friends. And they built like a, it's just so there to me, they had a real friendship before they even got married. So it's been situations that they could have just been like, you know, they don't want to be together, but they've really been working at it. Like they've been working at it. And he's 40 now. You know what I mean? So um, I think he's good. And then my other brother seemed like he never had no problems with his wife. I don't know because they keep this stuff private and I appreciate that. But they've been together for over 10 Absolutely. years too. You know what I mean? And he left because, you know, to me, when it's solid, it's solid. I feel like sometimes the woman, unfortunately, give up or make a big deal out of stuff. Like men to me are more simple. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. If things are going right, women are starting like stuff they lost. Like, uh, you're not like I want you to be. It's a, it's a whole different things they're trying to change now. So now they don't know. They want something different. They want something new. Or whatever. The problem with you not how I want you to be is those are your own expectations. And mm-hmm. me, those are not what I aspired to be or do and Absolutely. those situations could be bad from either perspective yep. if you're looking at her like she's not what you wanted her to be then you shouldn't be with her mm-hmm. because she's not looking to be most women in the you know 30s 40s or 20 late 20s ain't looking to be molded mm-hmm. uh you can be molded just by the way that things go but if somebody's actively telling you like I don't like this, that, or whatever about you, then you should find somebody who fits those criteria that you. Yeah, that you absolutely, want. I agree with that. But a lot of times, people instead of finding it, they try to force the person they're with for a peg round hole. Yeah, we we'll try to make them be what they want them to be, and a lot of times that just starts a lot of confusion. A lot of just unfortunately, people don't look at their selves. No one takes accountability of their selves and how mm-hmm. they've changed and evolved. Like you said, if we're going in a different direction, we definitely need to be together. 
because I can't, why do I have to change? Because you're changing, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm not, I'm comfortable, like where, where I'm at with my job and stuff. You know, some people get married, have a decent job, be doing good, but then somebody in a situation want way more. Now, all of a sudden they want more. I, I want more. And then you're not, you don't have the drive that they want. Cause you know, you don't build with your company. You're good in your position, but they feel like you're not trying to get more out of not life. Reaching your full yeah, you're not reaching your full potential. Yeah. Yeah. So, but again, that goes to you having an expectation of me or wanting something that I don't want. Mm-hmm. Now, some t- some people it's like it could be just a kick in the kick in the ass that you need it, mm-hmm. and some people it's like you just nagging the hell out of me because you want me to be something that I'm not. Absolutely. Accept me for who and what I am, or move the fuck on. It's always a thing. Shout out to my man TJ from It's Better This Way. Mm-hmm. TJ said this shit years ago. He was like, "You can't be scared to walk away. You always got to know that you got the option to walk away." Absolutely. Yeah. I was married for 10 years. I got divorced in 2019 because I was dying in my marriage. So I was like, I could have stayed there because he was financially, he had money. And I could have been there and stuff. Because everybody said, girl, don't leave him, girl. He got money. I'm just trying to tell you what. Don't do this. This is another episode. Don't do this. Don't well, do I'm this. just letting you know that I have been married for 10 <laughs> years. I'm over 40. I've been experienced this. I was engaged prior to that two times or whatever. You've... I'm just letting you know. I've no, have experienced. No, you. You triggered something in me that has now gone to another episode. We'll talk <laughs> okay. about that. We'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> That's good shit right there. You, you, um, anyway, <laughs> stay on top. Let me stay on task. I like that though. Okay. Uh, damn, you can. Damn, you killed me. Uh, Let's talk about doubling okay. back. And who's TV. likely to more? To, who's more likely to double back? I'm gonna say the woman. Mm-hmm. I think that. Men can have way more casual situations than a woman. Dudes can, like you said, we've married for 10 years and a nigga will go to the bar tonight and knock something down. Mm -hmm. A woman is less likely to go to that bar and do something tonight. Are you serious? Are you sure? It's 2022. I mean, a lot of things unchanged. I'll have a lot of females that are associates around me. And yeah, they out there too doing the same thing. They think they do. They think they can do what a man does and they shouldn't do that, but they'll do stuff like that. Copy. I'll wholeheartedly go with you there because that's one of those things that I hate. People always get mad about double standards, and it just is what it is. Yeah, there's a double standard for a reason. Uh, <laughs> but like for the most part, women will go though. Like uh, I know him, and it's a comfortable situation more than a man. I believe, as far as like I've said, just as far as the double back goes, not like let's build a relationship or any of that, mm-hmm. because. Like I stated in the beginning, for a man to get to a situation where he wants to be with you mm-hmm. and now things break left, he's devastated by the fact that things didn't work out now because it took so much for him to get to the point where he said, you know what, you're it and I'm going to just be with you. That's if we're doing things, you know, a certain way now. Mm-hmm. If you still was playing and doing you on the side, then all right, copy, different situation. That's not what we talk about, though. Mm-hmm. We talk about everybody's keeping things cool. But, um, yeah, I think the woman would be far more likely now. Like you said, these new age chicks, though. Is, yeah, and it's different. Think- the mentality has changed now. Now it's like, okay, they're not, to me, looking at nothing st- stable. They're not looking at stability. They're not looking at somebody else's feelings and what is this going to do to our relationship? And especially if they have children. I mean, they cause so much drama. I'm sorry, I see so much. And I be trying to ask them, like, why are you standing? I, have a, I had a friend because I cut off a lot of people in 2020. So I had a friend who was married, but she had a boyfriend. And she was dating other people. I'm like, what are you doing? And she was over 40. I'm like, well, did you know that? I mean, what are you doing here? She had one child and it, and it wasn't by that particular person. But she was like, well, I'm living my life now and all this stuff or whatever. But I'm like, are you living your life? Are you causing drama? Like, that's energy. Like, what are you doing? Why don't you just divorce your husband? <laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> you know about what to say. What did, you, what did yeah. you get married for at that point? Well, they, she's staying married because everybody, she's been married for like 18 years now. So she don't want to look bad. However, she's doing bad things to her relationship. Like people sabotage their relationships and they want to do it because other people are watching. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. They have a, 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 a whole, they don't want nobody to talk about them. And some people are like that still. They might be like, Not you even know. Even just that though, like you said, she has a child who is watching all of these different mm-hmm. things. People always get it confused to thinking that, oh, they don't know because they're however age or whatever. But if, when it comes out, that- <laughs> Mommy been doing this for the past 18 years. All you're doing is showing them how to be sneaky. It's showing them everything. They're doing everything you do. You don't even know that. Like saying you don't know that they're doing it though because you're too busy doing what you're doing. Exactly. And at that point, like, see, this has always been my situation. Is I'm not 
I don't value other people's opinion enough. Like, not everybody, but a lot. I don't value a lot of people's opinion enough to care what they think about what it is that I'm doing. Exactly. Like, I would never get a certain job or just stay married or do anything just because it's like, I don't want other people to talk about me and I don't want it to look a certain way. Like, I don't give a fuck what you think. Like, Honey, I'm in Atlanta. What were you at? Philly. My bad. Philly. Damn, I didn't get that international hype. I forgot. I usually ask the guests, where are you from? And throw that out there. Okay. So I'm in Atlanta and people are very, to me, it's no stability as far as relationships anymore. That's, that don't have that, like you just said, the attitude that you have, like, I don't care about what anybody else is thinking. I'm doing what's right for me in my situation. We have an understanding. A lot of people don't do that here. Everybody right to me that I've met, especially in the industry I'm in, I'm, I do real estate. I do a lot of different things. So, you know, you start brushing shoulders with other people and stuff. You start seeing how people move. People are very sneaky, like you said. People have sneaky links. They have all this stuff going on because they want to, it's like they're trying to create drama. Or this person might have this, this person might have that. Or they want to, it's just too much drama here. I don't know. I just can't explain it. It's just very toxic. <laughs> it's drama People want to live like love and hip hop. <laughs> that part. Yeah, that part too. They want People want to live like love and hip hop. Yeah. The chicks now, like, everybody got on six pounds of makeup to go nowhere. Exactly. You're right. Just like these chicks do on these damn TV shows. Mm -hmm. Like, that's everybody true. wants That's to take it. pictures. Everybody wants to take pictures and act like they're doing this, that, or whatever, just like they do on these shows. Yeah. So, like, I remember the first season, the first season of uh, what was it, Basketball Wives? Mm -hmm. And Eric Williams is telling Jennifer, don't get caught up like them. None of them is married. You listening to these goofy, we're only arguing right now because you listening to these goofy motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. None of them married. Yep. Don't end up like them. And lo and behold, she listened to these goofy motherfuckers and now she was divorced just like the rest of them. That was like football wives. Deion Sanders told Pilar the same thing. He was but actually he didn't tell you what it was a reality check for him. So when he stopped, you know, playing and start retiring, he was at home with her. He said, This is what you do all day. <laughs> he realized that she was a pretty face. She was like, you know what I'm saying? He, she didn't do anything for him no more. Like, because he was home now. So they ended up getting divorced too. You know, he started messing with Babyface ex-wife because, you know, she that's was a go-getter and things like that. But he just wished he watched and see what his wife was doing. But that's was, too, that's also like a relationship that evolves. Mm -hmm. If we could have been great. I know I've said this on the podcast several times for people who listen every week. My bad. I know you locked in and I appreciate you hitting the button. You hit it already, though. Five stars only. We don't accept four. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we could have been perfect for each other. When we was 24. Mm -hmm. And from 24 to 27, girl, we had a magical run. Mm -hmm. But then, like you're saying, 27 hits and it's like, hey, so you don't have any ambition? <laughs> yeah, like, like, you don't want to do nothing else? You just want to sit here every day? You just want to put makeup on and sit in the house and do nothing? You want to wear these long-ass nails to do nothing? <laughs> like, I at mean, some point, like, at out. some point, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, at some point, it's like, uh, the goal was whatever, and if you hit that goal, now you have to have another goal. Yeah. So, so one of us could be ambitious as hell. It could be the guy who's the woman is ambitious as hell, and she's trying to hit all these different goals. And then she realizes years later, it's like, so you never were trying to do any of this other shit, but you have to recognize those things in your relationship. And it's way easier for somebody else. This is one of those things that always happens. It's so much easier for me to look inside your relationship and tell you, you should leave him or you should leave her because of this, 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 and this. And it's like, when you ain't got no time, no energy, no effort, no years invested into this situation. So it's easy as shit for you to tell me to leave my relationship. Mm -hmm. But being inside that relationship and you going like, well, damn, you start to look at it like, well, did I just waste the last four years? Did I just waste the last six years? Like, <clears throat> do I need to go here? Do I need to reevaluate this situation? Like, it's a lot that you go into when you're thinking yeah. about those different situations. Yeah. I mean, you're right. And then it depends on what else is going on while you're in that relationship. I'm going to say this. Um, in my relationship, my mother, my father died and my sister died, right, when I was married. He had never lost anybody. You know what I'm saying? So 
he didn't really know how to be empathetic, which was okay because I can't, I can't make you be a certain way. You know what I mean? I just mm. asked you to be there for me. Like if I want to hug or, you know what I'm saying? Because you might not know what to say. I just, I'm glad that you're there though. You know what I'm saying? So, it's sometimes, nothing to say. It's just all about being there. Right. Just being there. And some people don't know how to do that. They don't want to face that. I'm just saying certain things that you start realizing like, this is not what I want. You know what I'm saying? This is not what I need right now. It wasn't until his daughter's husband got murdered that certain things started to, you know, he started to I guess, find his emotions. But it shut him mm -hmm. off. Then his sister died, right, after that. And then it shut him off because he didn't know how to deal with those emotions. So I'm going to say this. When you're in a relationship and you're dealing with real problems, but a person have never dealt with it. Because my mom had already died in 2006. I had already dealt with death with my mom and my other sister in 2004. So I, had, I was kind of not used to it, but I was preparing for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I lived that life differently. And this person didn't. So anyway, it made us kind of like, it separated us because... Now he shut down. Like he don't know what to say. He don't know what to do. He don't even know what to say to me. He feel like he don't want to say the wrong things or whatever. I'm just trying to tell you. Some sometimes you have to leave because it's time. It's just time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, this was another thing that another episode that we did. I believe it was episode like 51, 48, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, do all relationships have an exp expiration date? And majority <laughs> majority yeah, of them do. I believe so. Yes. Like majority of relationships have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like your friend that was your man, your best girlfriend in high school, it just stopped there. Yeah. Y'all probably got together a couple of times after that, but then you look up and it's 15, 20 years later and you ain't talked to that person. Exactly. And you because have to grow up. It. I'm saying yeah. like when you have young relationships, y'all gonna grow up and y'all gonna have things differently than, you know what I mean? At 18, you don't feel the same way as 21. 21, you don't feel the same way as 25. 25, most people don't. At 25, you don't feel the same way at 30. You know what I mean? Way to, th you way look to throw at in that most people. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Way to throw in that most people. Yeah, most people. I mean, I'm niggas is saying. 46 and still thinking that they're they, they, they 18. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people still stuck in their high school or their college lifestyle. I'm like, okay, no, we you real grown, grown now, okay? <laughs> I'm glad that you experienced that because the college is an experience. But some people, that's all they they still stuck. And they're like 47 now. They went to college when they were 18 to 21. And they're, they're doing things about college. What have you done besides that? <laughs> besides college yeah, you, you know what i mean about, if you still yeah. talking about that great night in 1992 exactly. like, i can't do nothing for you like i remember <laughs> and we went through the struggle we had some good times then boy we had all the <laughs> you know <laughs> you know how you run into like an old cat and he's telling you like yeah and all the ladies and all the cars and everybody was on me you're like and he's like 60 now oh, and that's, all like, that's everybody in jail everybody had all the work in the world all the guns all the girls it's like yeah, but you got it's like you still dollars on your books guys copy yeah. <laughs> Come on now. All right, let's personalize this now. Okay. Were you or your ex more like who? Which one of y'all, or did either one of y'all look to double back? I didn't. I never go back. <laughs> Always forward, never backwards. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it didn't work. Then it's not gonna work now. I'm a different person. Uh, and, and that's for real. Anybody I've been with before, I'm still cool with them, and I see them. They married. They got what they really wanted. I'm to be honest with you. I don't feel like I'm built for marriage. I'm built for companionship for a long time. But the marriage part, when I say that, people change when they get married. You know what I mean? They change how they look at stuff and their roles and everything just changes. And I don't want you to change, baby. We're going to need to live. We got to, you know, we could set up a structured relationship and we can have things in, in, in place for us if anything happens and things like that. We don't have to have that contract. We'll have other contracts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're my business partner now. I'm telling you, let me tell you, you can do all that if you want to, but I'm just trying to let you know. Like, I, I no, don't, I'm, I'm I just, thinking here. <laughs> what? <laughs> do I go in? Do I go into this topic now with you, or do we save this for later? We can save it for later because we, we because I'm trying deep. to think of. I'm telling you, I, I told somebody this. Like, my conversations are all currency because mm -hmm. it's topics in every conversation that you have. Right. And what I'm trying to think of here is. I don't want to, in fact, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just run over it in five or six minutes right, when right, right. we can turn that into a whole other. Yeah, yeah. we can save it for later because it is <laughs> it's deep. It's not no. <laughs> That's why I said I don't, I'm trying to think of should we just do this real quick or should I save this? We can save it. I, was, I think I'm going to save it. Yeah. Put, we're going to put a pen in that for later, but <laughs> copy that. I, I like where you go. I like where you're going here. You know what yeah. I'm saying I'm not making these faces because oh, like, I thought oh, you was like, oh my god. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what I'm going to is do I get two, three people to do that episode? Or do I just do different it with perspectives? You? No, you should get other perspectives. That's what I, I mean, believe. 
you know uh, I mean? Yeah, because that if this is all falling in the lines of uh, I did, why does marriage work and why doesn't marriage work? Right, right. And this is a series that I'm gonna continue to build on. And the two things that you brought up so far in this episode are ding 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 ding. We got two more episodes there. Right, right. Okay. We're gonna leave okay. we're gonna leave that we'll one. Leave it. We're gonna leave it. Damn. Cool. Um, <laughs> damn. Uh Ooh, so, my doubling back. <laughs> yes. In any of your situations I was about to say. Uh let's get off of this one. Uh for me personally, um, I, I, how can I really say this? Because I never really, I never was in relationships. Like I just talk to people, and like you know, sometimes you just don't talk no more. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I I don't have bad relationships with nobody. Me There's either. nobody like that I used to talk to, and it's like, oh god, this bitch here she come. I can't stand her. I wish her house burns down. Type. And I don't have it with right. nobody. Right. So. A double back for me, it would be like, oh, yeah, we still cool. We just don't talk no more. Like, if I'm running to you, it's all love. Like, that's so, not really doubling back. It's you being cordial. And you know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. That's what I'm pleasant. saying. So, like, yeah, you ran into her tonight and she looked good enough and she was with it and you was with it. And hey, it is what it is. It's yeah. a familiar situation. But, like, I ain't the six months later, you up text and we yeah. ain't talked since. You don't know what's going on in life either. Let me tell you something. I don't know about the generation right now, what's going on, but everybody just screwing everybody. Like, it ain't no real consequences. Like, it ain't no STDs, yeah. ain't no babies, ain't no none of this. Like, what y'all doing? Ain't no emotions getting attached. Ain't none of this. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's energy. So now nah, you don't know. The, you the say emotions no, and all of that is, everybody's emotions and all of that is attached, but they so fuck, you so fucked up from all that's of these. That's what I'm saying. All the toxicity situations that you've been in, and you, you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, you bring it to that oh. person. Like, now you don't understand. Let me say something. I know you don't had this situation. I don't know if you had it. I can't say I know. But have you ever dealt with somebody and y'all maybe had, you know, uh, sex? And afterwards, you feel like messed up. Like you got an attitude. <laughs> you got all kinds of stuff. You know, you just had a good, a good moment and y'all, everything because you don't took on all those energies, all those different people she was dealing with. You ain't got that now. Right. Now you messed up. So I heard you say that on your podcast before. Yep. Um, <laughs> I would say that it would be like for a dude, it would be like, damn, why did I hit you? At the time, you was just like, yo, I need to get this nut off. Then yeah. after you do, it was like, oh, God, you. <laughs> like, so it's kind of the same thing, but it's like it's just a little different spin on it. For yeah, God. it's a different perspective. How you deal with it was different. Yeah, I know some people get I get it, like attitude. I don't been in that situation. Like, why am I so mad? Like, oh, <laughs> Let me tell you something. Okay, not even that. It's not even with a man. I, I'm an empath, so I pick up people's energy. I had a homegirl who was over here. We was really cool, but I could tell she was off that day. And she was like, can I just take a nap on your sofa? And I was like, okay, you all right? So I let her take a nap. And she's like, well, I'm just going to head and leave. And I was so glad because I felt different because I was watching, Um, I forgot a show. It was, uh, I can't forget what I was watching, but I started feeling like horrible thoughts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sad. I started being sad. I'm like, why am I sad? Like, I'm talking about sad. Like, suicidal thoughts and stuff right so i was like so i went in my room and i do like sage and stuff and i pray to god like what is this remove whatever's on me so she didn't even come all the way to my room she's like i'm about to go ahead and go so i staged my whole like my whole house i prayed to god and stuff like get all this evil energy in my house i swear to god within five minutes it was like clear and everything she was like a demon to me like it was like i felt that like she because she was like messed up already and that's like i'm feeling what she's feeling in her head because she wanted to lay down and stuff like why you want to like you know because she stayed around the corner so why'd you want to come over here and lay down? Why you come the hell over here and lay yeah. down? <laughs> like, but I'm thinking like you maybe wasn't, you wasn't on a trip, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I ain't want to say no. All right, want to say you live right around the corner now. <laughs> but I'm like maybe she need to lay down. And she can make it home. And she had said she was tired. I'm like okay. But anywho, long story short, you can feel when people are kind of messed up. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know how, what type of energy you have, but I pick up people. And I immediately, I dismiss them. That's why I don't really have too many people around me, like for real, in in small spaces, because. It, it, you got to be a happy person. I got to feel that. You got to be a good person. Beautiful segue that you just gave me because now we're going to talk about the new normal. And you had on the new normal, you did like a short. You do like these short, uh, mm-hmm. you do like these shorts and you had one where you were saying uh, a bunch of people that you had met like in the podcast community <sighs> where a bunch of niggas be with, the, they just be fake. People don't be about their word and all of that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. See, and this real- is how these <laughs> this is how these situations go though you gotta filter all of that yeah and if you feel as though 
oh no, nah, me and such and such just didn't connect. I, like you said, you wasn't feeling this energy. Block they ass and move on. Yeah. I've been doing this for six years or five years. Five years I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. I never I met probably like one dude who was like, oh, you just a dickhead. Mm -hmm. And it's no reason for me to argue with you back and forth on the internet. I hate internet gangsters and all of that shit. Look, we cool. Right. There's no ain't no harm, ain't no foul. We good. Mm -hmm. You we unfollow each other and we good. We ain't got have nothing else to say now. And if you just tough guy in a situation, we could just block you and move on. Because mm -hmm. I this is not what I'm here for. I'm here for let's get this work done. Let's knock these episodes out. Let's build these relationships. Right. If I got somebody who calls me and says, Hey, I got something going on down Atlanta, you know anybody who oh yeah, I can make several phone calls and say, Yo, such and such is you know, I love to be able to do right. that. Right. Because that's what happens when you treating this shit like it's a business. That part. But, you got, but everybody don't treat this like a business. So when you meet people who aren't treating this like it's something that's real and it's something that's tangible, get the fuck away from them. Mm -hmm. That's cool. You want to do you. And hey, maybe this is it's just a hobby for you. Mm -hmm. Fine. You do that over there. because This is not that lane that I'm in. I'm in the lane of business. I'm in the lane of cultivating something into the, turning this thing into something mm -hmm. like everybody's not there. No, they're not. So you got so when you said that on the episode and was like just so many of these people be fake yeah. you're gonna meet a whole bunch of people in any business y'all can I both be selling so. hot dogs on the curb yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. one yeah. of these individuals ain't gonna be cool and that's perfectly fine just get the fuck away from them and move on that's right well that's what i was you saying gotta... before though i mean not to cut you off i'm sorry now go ahead I'm saying that I've met so many people and my cutoff game is real strong because I can feel the bull crap. Like as soon as I meet you, like it's one thing to be online like we're doing here. It's one thing to meet you in real life, though, mm -hmm. in real life. And I didn't know. And I just started watching this these episodes with Charleston White. And he is right. People put on these characters because, you know, he said he has a character. So when you meet them in real life, they're a whole different person. They're not the same person you've met doing this like right now the person that you feel like you got to know over yeah a, a like of, yeah mm -hmm. we've been reporting stuff like that but then in real life you way different you're not you're nothing like the person that i thought you were and i know people want to put on, on yeah for what to I mean this is me like i'm, I'm me all the items not gonna be like when i get this off take these headphones off i'm gonna be a whole different person no this is me because i feel like connecting people more because they feel like they can relate to me because i'm being myself not me putting on a, a character. That's why I had, I changed too, though. Because in the beginning, like I said, I was getting my feet wet and I was doing things with people. And I was trying to figure out, like, what's my lane? What's my niche? Like, what is people going to like from me? So I was doing things that I didn't, like, I really didn't want to do music at first. So I had, because I had a, 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 a guy from a record label. He was like, look, I got all these artists. I want you to interview for me. So I was like, okay, cool. And everybody was dope. Like, I liked all that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, but I didn't want to do that all the time. Like, I didn't want to find <laughs> artists because I wanted to talk. I didn't want to just, I'm here to interview. You don't want to be an interviewer. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to be an interviewer or whatever, but I felt like I was being thrown into that. So I was like, no, because everybody was like, you should interview this person. I'm like, I'm like I don't even want to listen to that music. Like, it's like certain stuff. Like, I'm not even, I want to do what I want to do. I feel like it's feeding people. I don't want to, I don't want to give you something that's not going to feed you. Or I don't want to just give you some, like, music as far as music. Like, I don't want to give you junk. I want some deep stuff. I want something that you can really like vibe to and grow from. So I mean, so I had to start filtering out a lot, a lot of different things on that. And then as far as relationships, I didn't want to talk about my sexual encounters. You know what I'm saying? A lot of women talk about all the things they done did. I'm like, y'all really are out here with that. Talking about they do this with this, 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 this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I don't care. So I'm saying, what you going to do when your son Googles mommy and finds out, mommy, you took three and the same. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, y'all want to talk about this like it's nothing. Like, it's just like, okay, it's not okay. You know, it's not. I have a son. I have a 17-year-old son. Me and him are very, we have a very candid relationship, very open we don't play the radio about a lot of different things, but he'll ask me certain stuff. I'm very honest with him. He's very honest with me. So I don't want to, I don't want to ruin that by him thinking like my mama doing it. Like you know, my mama, because he loves me. I, don't, I tell people this all the time. It's going, it sounds a certain way, but it's the truth. If you Google my name, a whole lot of my, all my stuff comes up. Mm -hmm. I never want my daughter. This is why I don't really do. Like I just tell that to the conversation that I had with the young ladies on the episode last week was like, I don't go sexual on topics because my aunt listens to the podcast. I don't want my daughters to ever go, Daddy, this is what you were talking about. Yeah. Dad, you're talking about mommy. <laughs> like, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? <laughs> and yeah, you don't want them to just look at you like that. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Because I, I don't want to look at my mom and dad like that. Like, you know how? Copy that. And, and then, again, this is another one. This is a topic that's 
in yeah. the 60s. That's a topic that's coming up. But you know, I feel, <laughs> um, I, I feel like me personally, I was blessed because I did have my mom and my dad in the same house. So they both raised me. They both were totally different people, though. My mom was a nurse. She was quiet. She had the four kids. My daddy was loud, outgoing. He was a truck driver. You know, he, it was just like, it was just so different, but they were still, they was good for each other because of the differences. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it gave me balance, but I wanted to be more like my daddy, though. My daddy was always happy. I feel like my mom was always like, you know how the mothers be firm. They'd be like, you can't do that. You can't do this. You better get your tail to bed. My daddy let me do whatever I want. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was see, doing we, we had the inverse situation here. You can play with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but shouts out to those two parent children. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I got one more thing for you before I let you go. Okay. You had the episode, which let me get the name correct. Uh, give me one second. I should have had this up already, but I put the damn phone back down. And of course, it's taking forever to load. I think it was like, Can You Hear Me? Was that oh, the yeah. name of it? Yeah, Can You Hear Me? About okay, like, so, yeah. All right. One, let me say this as a listener. Uh, the raw emotion that you have in that uh, uh, episode, the vulnerability that you show in that episode, and it's only like I think it's like 15 minutes or 17 minutes or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. It was like a beautiful situation Thank you. because a lot of people use these as their own therapy situations. Mm-hmm. Just like you said, I was trying to find what's my lane and what's my niche. And the advice that I will always give people is you do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. The way that the world is set up now, you're going to meet somebody in Philly and Mississippi and Arkansas who thinks exactly the way that you think, mm-hmm. where you don't have to compromise exactly who you are for whoever else. Like you said, it th- was giving you these artists to do these music interviews. And it was like, yeah, this is a good thing, but it's not what I want to do. So right. don't do it. Right. Because if you don't feel it, then ain't nobody else going to feel it. But mm-hmm. it only comes off when you're being genuine with the person. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not feeling it, then I'm not going to do it. I've done episodes with people and it was like, yo, I didn't like that and I'm not going to put it out. And this is why I'm not going to put it out. Right. You got to always look at these situations like, uh, this is the example I keep giving people. It's Tyler Perry. Mm-hmm. When a Tyler Perry movie comes out, it says, written by Tyler Perry, directed by Tyler Perry, uh, script, uh, manufactured, edited, the catering, the bathrooms, everything is Tyler Perry. So when you do in this situation and your name is going to be on it and you're on the line, and again, if you're being real with the people, give them exactly what you want to give them. Yeah. That episode right there, I loved it Thank because you. it was you exposing you again. It was you being real and you exposing your own raw emotions and feelings about it. You could have put that out, listened to it and was like, maybe I just needed to say that shit because sometimes it's like, maybe I just need to hear it. Maybe mm-hmm. I just need to write it. And then I get those emotions out and we good. But for you to put that out there and expose that to everybody, for people who listen, that was beautiful. Thank you. And Thank I you. wanted to tell you that personally, because like I said, you were saying, this is me, 24-7, 365. Everybody gets the same energy except my mom. She's the only one that I <laughs> tighten this thing up for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody, everybody else, same energy. Unless but, we got an older aunt or something like that, everybody right. else gets the same speed. I appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. I, I was telling you, like, yeah, my podcast is therapy for me. And it is. Everybody's like, is, or should yeah. be. But I've had people tell me that, too. Like, thank you, too, about certain episodes they heard. It was like, man, you be keeping mm-hmm. it real. I mean, I have a lot of older people. I'm like, okay. I say older, because I'm 43. I might be 44. But they be, like, in their 50s and 60s. So I'm like, if, I, if they are relating to me, it made me feel good. Like, it made me feel like it. it's getting some... Yeah. Them niggas got Apple Podcasts just like everybody else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I take a five star. Like I said, I did a live show. My aunt was down there in the building. I take a five star from her the same way I went from my nephew. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but uh, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. I appreciate uh, having me. We got two more topics that we pulled out of here. We're going to talk about a little bit of that when we get off of here. Okay. But um, <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. That was episode 58. Please let everybody know where to follow you at one more time <laughs> before we go. Hey, everybody, it's your girl, Re. You can follow me on Instagram at new underscore normal podcast, too. You can follow me on Spotify, Anchor. Everything's on my Instagram page under my link tree. So I'm on everything, iHeartRadio. But I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you for having me. You know, this was a great experience because, you know, it was new. I never met you. Mm -hmm. It's my first time. So I appreciate it. It was a good experience. All right, y'all. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.